What I'm about to do here is to make a spiral groove, a grease groove in these uh, links for a set of girder forks on an old BSA. <coughs> the first thing I'll do is centre this post so that and set that to zero on my conversational programming. So I'll do that with the Hymer. It, it does not be really super accurate, but you get fairly close with the, the Hymer uh, doing it this way. Okay, well here we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. We'll go down in the Z so we're close to the top. And then we'll go along in the X axis, all using the jog controller. Bit in the Y axis, then down. Um, back in on the Y axis, so is it, it's just about touching. Or will be. And then back into the X axis. Now, then what you'll see is that needle climb like that. When it gets to dead centre or the centre, it stops or almost stops. About there, about there, rather. And then it starts slowly to go back away. There you go. So there's quite a long period where it dwells, where it's such a very small difference. And I would guess it's probably about there. So there's some kind of hysteresis on the uh, Heimer that when you go the other way, it seems to want to climb higher. Oh, it's not so bad there. I would say that's about centre, maybe just a touch more. And I will then go into my uh, conversational. Let's see if I can zoom up there. Okay, I'll go into the conversational to drill and tap. I'll set my, well, first of all, I'll set the x axis to zero because that's what it, I've done. There's the zero. And then I'll concentrate on the y axis next. So here we go on the y axis. So along in the x-axis and then across in the y that's pretty close there and I reckon that's about maybe a tad more I think that's good enough for centre on the y-axis so once again, go back up to the screen and I will set the Y on zero, hit the enter, always hit the enter. And then I'll put my X and Y coordinates as zero, enter, zero, enter. Okay, and that's, I'm not going to bother doing the second one, I'll just realign for the second one. So that's it set up for for that. Next job is to Z-reference the tool. So we'll go back to here and there we go there. I'll take this up in the Z-plane. Take this up. And here we have the cutter. Basically this is homemade as you can see, pretty rough but it works well, well enough anyway. It's a little bit on the blunt side to be quite honest. However it basically just an old end mill that was broken on the tip before I got my uh, special grinder that does the tips. I used to think of things to do with them and one was to make little slot mills. And If you grind the end flush and get it nice and flat and then grind the, the stem away it's quite good. I've got one or two that were done in the tool and cutter grinder that I've got there that look much nicer than this. This one was probably a first early experimental one before I had as much equipment. But uh, it's the thin one, it's a small, it's a narrow one, and that's the one I want. Right, I've got to bring Z down to Z. I'm not going to touch it off, I'm just going to go very close to uh, the top, to within, see it. I'm just going to move that next axis along, hopefully you can see without my head in the way. Uh, down a bit more on the Z axis, set zero there, that's pretty close. I'll set zero and hit the enter button. So that's all my coordinates there, everything set. I should be able to come up. Good. 
go into the program, uh, go back to main or file, and we're looking for mill. There we go, six passes, pitch 12.4 millimeter, pitch 0 0.08 threads per millimeter. And that's the data I've got in 14.224 major and 13.716 minor diameter. Hit, uh, hit the cycle start. Looks good on the screen, the tools centered on the tool path. Just need to find where it's going to go relative to this. 50, 40, 30, 70, 37, 40, and here we go. It's got 1.26 millimeters to go up. So that's it, there we go. And that looks really good. That one's got a bit of hair on there, a bit of cooling. Slightly off centre in the Y, more than slightly, quite a bit off, but never mind, it'll touch. It's got six cuts to me. And it should go another half turn. Six passes to me. We'll come back to it towards the end. I don't know if you can hear me above the noise of the compressor, but uh, this is us on the final pass. Uh, I'll have to reset the zero because it was a little bit not too eccentric, and the uh, oil groove or the grease groove would have been just too far over on one side be of any use so that's the reason for me changing things and I just realised you can't see anything there let's get it a bit closer where you can see it on me and uh, it's just around to the last cut as you can hear it's not cutting at one side well that's anyway, that's good enough for a uh, grease groove, it's not... I don't know if you can hear me above the noise of the compressor, but uh, this is us on the final pass. Uh, I'll have to reset the zero because it was a little bit not too eccentric. And the um, oil groove or the grease groove would have been just too far over on one side to be of any use. So that's the reason. Just realise you can't see anything there. Let's get it a bit closer where you can see it on me. And uh, it's just around the last cut. As you can hear, it's not cutting at one side. Well, that's anyway, that's good enough for a uh, grease groove. It's not. Well, here we are about to do the last one. Hopefully all the settings are still correct. Um, it cuts okay. Had a few problems getting it cut nice and evenly, but uh, so far so good. And that doesn't sound too bad. Uh, Slightly light on this side. Six passes to me. Uh, it's not put in there. I'm not happy. So 
Now this is the uh, last oil groove that I'm doing. I've had a lot of troubles with uh, keeping the post vertical because these are pretty rough. Uh, uh, basically they're just a forging that uh, when I brace new uh, spindles in uh, weren't as flat as they should be. So I've had to shift the, the X and the Y zero point around a bit uh, just to make sure it's evenly spaced around it. It's, it's annoying because one or two, this one worked fine straight away, this one I've had to reset a couple of times and another one I did about four or five times all at the uh, centre before I got it to cut reasonably even all around. But this one's looking good, so it's only got another three passes to go and a few without off each cut. So. And you can hear it's, it's starting to bite in about here, which is where it was uh, slightly shallow. So I'm quite happy with it. So we'll see how it goes from so there, they're fine. So it's quite a good, good little project. Uh, I don't like them, um, uh, it becomes a bit of a nightmare after you spray it with the uh, EN24. And also drilling, I think it tends to either work harden or harden when it's uh, being uh, heated, heated or sprayed. And it's just a pig to drill those holes without wandering off through there. And they're very long holes when you make a 4 inch length or a 3 inch length to go between two links because that's the best way to keep it parallel. Anyway, one more pass after this and I'll be in. And it's, uh, it's looking good. And you can tell why I, I moved it. You can hear it's not touching the, the metal in places. It's touching here which is where I wanted it to. Um, I'm good with that. As long as it's improved that the grease can get distributed around the bearing, that's fine. Here's the last pass now. Okay, we'll see what they look like when, when I've deburred them and uh, we we'll fit them into the fork, the forks themselves and get the forks assembled. Just one last video of the forks and the, the finished forks. As you can see, they're quite a rid they're really rigid uh, without anything being tightened up, without this clamped up or anything. You can just feel how, how good and solid they are. I've no doubt when they were taken apart the, the links would have just about fallen out. But it's quite, there's quite a lot of, uh, it takes quite a lot to actually make them move. Um, because they're very, they just tend to be stiff. I, I don't know how, everything is very precise and uh, as far as I can get it uh, very accurate. But they, they do tend to be stiff when you first uh, sort of uh, assemble them. And as I say, within a couple of days, you use these things slacking right off.